So less than a year ago, I had a high school student walk into my office, and at the same time, I had this uh, fly flying around in my office. And he was looking for a science project. I told him, if you could catch the fly, you had a science project. He didn't realize I meant that quite literally. You see, I'm a gizmologist. I build machines to visualize these biological machines. So we caught our prisoner, and we went back to our microscope. This is what we saw. This is for the first time we've been able to visualize a fly feeding that you see on the right in real time. This is a common house fly. It's feeding on a sugar solution. We have exotic species, too. We've been able to image all the way from bumblebees to mosquitoes to the more dangerous, the TT flies and the flesh flies. These machines are absolutely remarkable. What you see is a two-stage pump with a capillary and a peristaltic pump working together. What we discovered astonished us. We found that flies are capable of feeding five orders of magnitude in viscosity of fluid solutions. That's all the way from water to molten chocolate. You might have known this in your kitchen, but we also solved a very famous Baker's paradox, which says, Energy that comes out of a fluid goes linearly to sugar concentration, but the amount of energy it takes to pump that goes exponentially. So here is a problem. If the flies can't figure out what viscosity the fluid is, they might be feeding to death because they're consuming more energy. So here is my proposal to solving the obesity problem. Uh, but then I took a step back. I thought, what does this all mean to physics of parasitology? Are there parasites out there that are utilizing this physics for unintended consequences? Malaria kills a million people per year, but we have never been able to visualize individual parasites moving around these complex labyrinths. In my lab, we're building molecular tools to be able to tag individual parasites and maybe, maybe solve the very old paradox of how when a parasite goes into an insect gut, how does it end up at a salivary gland where it actually becomes infectious? To give you a view of a parasite site, how a parasite feels when it goes through an insect gut, here is a very short clip. This is the giant fly. This is the proboscis. This is the actual pump that it goes through. And then it comes out, and this is a cutaway of the head itself. The case I'm trying to make here is actually the value of curiosity-driven science. Another example, very recently, two weeks ago before I got a call from Chris, I was studying metamorphosis, and we discovered a physical object that is fundamentally important for developmental biology in flies that originates from a physics of cavitation of these bubbles that arrive. So what you see is a pupa with a bubble that cavitates, and this bubble actually is fundamentally important in developmental biology of the fly. Uh, you might ask what happened to the high school student. A few months later, I got an email. Uh, he had this in his attachment. Uh, but he also had a very profound letter telling me about his own discovery of wonder. Thank you very much.